So welcome to today's webinar. This is the first in a series of webinars where we are featuring technicians and clinicians from around the North American market. We want to get their perspective on where the market is and where they think the market is going. And today we are featuring Dimitri Siklis, the owner, technician and owner of Style Dental Laboratory and Academy in Laval, Quebec. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Dimitri. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having and me. And your generosity. It's my pleasure. It's been awesome. So uh, let's get started and why don't we just have you tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, what can I say? Uh, the most important thing in my life is my family, my uh, beautiful four and a half year old daughter, my uh, loving wife and business partner. So we're both owners of uh, Style Dance. So we're partners in business as well as partners in life. Awesome. Uh, it works great for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the number one priority in, of who I am and what I do. Of course, on top of that, we have our baby, which is Styland. It's our other baby. It's not four and a half years old. It's, it's been open since 1993. So um, we give a lot of our time to, to this business, to our clients, to our employees. But we love it. We just love what we do. So since you're talking about that, how did you find your way into the dental field? So everything started when I was six years old, okay. yes, oh. with my father. My father was a dental technician. He had his own lab and uh, actually started at six years old because remember the old brass dowel pins? Okay. So he used yeah. to make me recycle them when I was six. I would hit the plaster with a little hammer and I used to recycle the dowel pins and I would get one cent each. Wow. That's how I would pay for my candy. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that was, that's very... Uh, uh, just very uh, curious how he got you not just to start in the field but to feel like you were doing something yeah right? definitely yeah, for sure in your sense of purpose so um so what have been some of the challenges that you've been faced with first as a technician and then moving from technician to being a lab owner so as all technicians when we start when we uh work because my dad's lab was very very small it was him one employee and when i joined myself mm -hmm. and then my wife also uh, came and joined us in the business but before that as all technicians we work with our own two hands that's all we have and it's the working hours so that was a big challenge back then a lot of working hours and also being able to provide a consistent result while working all of those hours is part of a big big challenge mm -hmm. yeah uh, I think that's a challenge that you know most technicians yeah. and lab owners face today what have been some of the challenges you have, you have faced as a technician and then moving into being a business owner? So again, one of the many, many challenges we all face, I believe, is from going to doing everything yourself is being able to delegate. Mm -hmm. That is uh, definitely uh, something that is, I mean, it's something you get used to, I guess, with time and, or a decision you have to make and accept it, that that's mm -hmm. how things are. Of course, um, another thing is being there and supporting a big team mm -hmm. and constantly uh, making sure everybody's on the same page from clients to employees. Uh, another thing is just having to figure things out. I mean, every day, every day there's something new. Uh, I'm the kind of person who loves to evolve and uh, a lot of people are happy with how things are and they just stick to what works, which is great, but we do have to evolve. And being that way is a good thing, but at the same time, the challenge as a business is just having to figure things out every day and investing in new technologies constantly. And sticking to your business model, exactly. right? It's, it's, uh, that's, yeah. that's a challenge. So talk me a little bit about your lab. How was your lab set up and how did it change over time? So you were a technician, worked in a smaller lab. Did it grow over time? And then as you became business owner, what happened? Was it bigger? Did it become smaller? As uh, things changed? Where well, the things changed basically. We were a very small lab. We were mm -hmm. two people, then three people when my wife joined. Mm -hmm. The reason for which Lydia and my wife joined was to help us and market us because my dad and I were giving great products, but nobody knew about them. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we needed somebody to market us. And that's where Lydia came into play and she really pushed that. Uh, she actually proposed a course uh, for me to give at the local universities. I was 26 years old. Uh, I was the first technician to ever do that and uh, it's an, been an ongoing conference for 10 years talking about dental materials 
and obviously the evolution of those dental materials over 10 years. So that helped us grow a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a lot of word of mouth, good quality work. We slowly, slowly moved from a 300 square foot place to buying an industrial condo of 1,500 square feet and growing to that. And then uh, today we also have our academy, so we have a total space of 3,000 square feet. And we are about nine or ten employees, depending on uh, yeah. depending on uh, who's on mat leave or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just the right. That's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what has been the biggest game changer for you in your business? Well, I mean, the, the evident answer I think that anybody would say is technology. Now, I'd like mm -hmm. to specify a little bit more. I believe that the technology is not a new thing at, in our place. We've been milling zirconia since 2007 in-house, so it's, it's not new. And I wouldn't say milling either because milling was a game changer maybe 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. Today, I would say it's digital impressions, 3D printing, and especially when we're talking about 3D printing, the different kinds of resins, the settings, uh, the uh, different technologies because you have different types of 3D printing so all those are game changers mm -hmm. and uh, again digital impressions all the different systems creating a proper workflow uh, those are those are challenges and game changers yeah and so you know we talk about and you're correct I think technology uh, is not new and as far as milling goes that's something that's been happening for a long time I think when it comes to milling, it's the materials that we're milling, right? There's been some advances in those. Definitely. Uh, so as far as zirconia goes, um, how, what are the criteria for you when you are selecting a material that you're going to use? Well, number one is reliability. And when I'm talking about reliability, I mean things need to be done properly. I want proper isostatic pressing. I need uh, to be associated to a company that knows what they're doing, that have been in the dental market for many, many years and that have the experience and the support to basically make sure that what I'm giving my clients and they're giving to their patients is sustainable, right? Yes. So uh, that is the number one thing. Second of all is definitely reliability as far as aesthetics and color. I hate surprises. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's something that's pre-shaded and it comes out of the sintering oven, a different color than what we chose, Clearly, there's a problem. Mm. So that is an important aspect as well. Uh, so how important is a cone in your daily uh, work? Very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been milling since 2007. We started with a little machine, the only one that existed back then. There were maybe two, three companies. We had started with uh, one of the three that existed. Mm -hmm. And we moved on to buying three uh, five-axis uh, machines that mill all day. So we're about 85% zirconia. Oh, wow. So it's a, it's, it's a big chunk of the work that comes out yes, of the laboratory. Yes. So what are the most common indications for using zirconia? The most common indications are full contour zirconia crowns and bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, in those we have different categories. Some are more translucent, others are stronger, but a little less translucent. And then if we want to go for higher aesthetics, we, we love layering. Uh, we have great ceramists um, and it's just a very, very current workflow. Uh, implant supported structures, mm -hmm. whether full contour or again layered, those are also indications. It's interesting. So, you, you, although full contour is still uh, very much popular in the market, you still do some layering. We so do a lot of layering. We have the best ceramists. I believe we have two of the best ceramists in the world. Mm -hmm. I great. truly mean that. Yes. Yeah. The talent is amazing. So. so, you do a lot of custom work still? A lot of custom work, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think later on we're going to see something about uh, where, because you do you have implemented the e lab uh, protocol in your laboratory. We have workflow. yes yes yes, and so maybe later on we'll be able to see Definitely. a case that we follow sure. we follow that protocol with. What is important to you when you are processing zirconia? We talked about maybe millability. When, when you're selecting sure. the zirconia itself, yeah. what's important? Well, the important aspect is definitely the density in each block, uh, but then again the very important part of this is millability. I mean, we do have uh, to make sense uh, as far as our production goes uh, for them not to have margins that get chipped and we have to remill. So yes, clearly we need our zirconia to be strong and dense, but sometimes if it's too hard, margins do chip. Okay. And also we don't want to induce too much of a wear on our burrs. Okay. So yeah. that is an important aspect as well. So it's interesting that you bring up the density of the zirconia, which can cause chipping. Sometimes uh, people think that the chipping just comes from 
the tooling or something with the mill, but it actually has to do with the type of zirconia. That the hardness of the actual block in its green state, yeah. Okay. Um, so why are they using the zero mill solid zirconia right now in your laboratory? Why did you choose to use that? I chose it for many reasons. Uh, I mean, as I spoke earlier, the, the company behind it is a, is a very important aspect. The support I get from the company, I mean, any question I have, uh, I'm sure the answer is has been thought of and researched. It's not just going to be an answer to get me off the line. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, clearly reliability, aesthetics, um, all those aspects for me are, are reasons for which uh, I chose it. Uh, what made you change? Uh, you know, you talked about uh, support, etc. But were you in a situation before where you did not have that, and that's what made you look for some a product that also gave you the support? Well, the uh, I'm not gonna lie by saying that what I was using wasn't good. It was good aesthetically. It was okay. It was it as reliable? No, it wasn't as reliable. We had some problems with coloring, so that was one of the reasons uh, that that made us make the switch. Uh, I compared. I just compared. I made two units of the same color. We centered them, and the result was superior with with uh, with Amon Gearbach. Mm -hmm. Now, the other major factor was service. I felt like just, uh, I, I mean, the support was just cookie cutter support. I wasn't getting real support when I really needed it. I was getting it when things were going well, but as soon as I had a an inquiry on 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 things that weren't working. I was getting no service. So to me, that's what shows if a company is serious or not. So your service for you was very important yeah. in making that decision. Uh, and so what do your employees like about the switch? Not having to redo anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're happy. And not getting a surprise in the morning when the centering oven's open and yeah. seeing colors being off. <laughs> that's important. You gotta keep them happy for yeah. sure. Uh, if you were to describe the Ceramel, Zolid, Zirconia, three words, what would you use? I would use, again, consistency, reliability, aesthetics, mm -hmm. uh, and also versatility. Here, I did before. Yeah, that's good. Hey, give us one more. What new products or processes would you like to see be available in the future? Well, I mean, we've I've heard of Gen X. Right, yes. so uh, definitely, uh, I would like to not have to choose um, strength over aesthetics, and I believe that is the beauty of, of Gen X. Uh, for those who don't know what it is, maybe uh, I'll just explain a little bit. Basically, it's a new type of uh, zirconia that Amand Gearbach has made, where we're gonna have different variants of translucency within the block. But the beauty of it, as opposed to many competitors, is that we are going to have the same strength throughout the block. So if you have a bridge, for example, uh, when you're milling a bridge, you usually have to angulate it in certain ways. So if you have different strengths in different layers, you're going to have some layers that are stronger than others. And to me, that's unacceptable. I mean, it may look good, but long term, it doesn't really work, in my opinion. Uh, that is what I love and looking for for from Gen X. Yeah. And that we're, we're planning that will be next year, probably launching at the beginning of next year for the U.S. market. Um, and how about other materials? You mentioned... Um, yeah, I would love to see more uh, on uh, some super polymers. Uh, I believe that uh, that is also part of uh, the future. Uh, super polymers, uh, for example, peak, uh, pectin, etc. I, I really think that uh, there are great indications for both kinds of materials. And I'd love to see faster printing times, more options for resins. Um, there's a lot of things I'd love to yeah. see, but these are just... <laughs> wish lists. <laughs> yeah, wish lists. <laughs> well, Dimitri, thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it.